about that kind of thing on the news. But for our next guest, it's just another day on the job. Meet one of the FBI's toughest hostage negotiators. He's right there, Gary Nessner, founding chief of the FBI Crisis Negotiation Unit and author of the new book, Stalling for Time. Good morning to you, Gary. Good morning, Gretchen. And actually, the essence of your whole discussion in the book is in the title, Stalling. You talk about in the book how negotiations, and much to do for, for you, because you were the one who inspired this, have changed over the last couple of decades. In what way? Well, when I first got involved in, in the negotiation business, uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, it was primarily a bargaining approach with uh, trying to leverage uh, what someone holding hostages would want to make a trade of some kind so we could get hostages released safely. What's really evolved is the realization that uh, police negotiators around the country are more likely to face emotionally driven situations with enraged individuals. And in those instances, we have to use a, a more of a crisis intervention approach, an active listening approach to create a relationship so we can begin to influence them positively. So let's talk specifically about the Waco case. Of course, the Branch Davidian compound, 1993, 51-day standoff. And, and you were on that scene. So was, was that an example of where you say that the approach used to be guns blazing, the, the FBI stormed in, and that now you would have approached that differently? No, uh, I was in charge of the negotiations out there for the first 26 days and during that time I think we pursued a pretty effective and innovative negotiation approach. We secured the, the release of 35 people including 21 children. Um, there was pressure on FBI management at the scene to take a, a tougher approach. Uh, there was criticism that the event was taking too long and costing too much. Hmm. So I think there was a decision to increase the external pressure to try to force them out and um, again I had left by that time, but it uh, had very negative uh, ramifications and, right. and we ended up in a pretty bad situation. So there. your whole point is that stalling and compromise seem to be better tactics? Well, uh, not compromise from the standpoint that we, we make major concessions, but dialogue is always effective. People want to be listened to and they want to be understood. Mm -hmm. And if law enforcement uh, demonstrates a genuine interest in hearing their side of the story and showing them respect and dignity, we're far more likely to get the outcome that we want. Very interesting. Uh, the, the most interesting part of your book is that some of these lessons about being a hostage negotiator we can actually use in our everyday lives. How? Well, I think um, the, the, the easiest concession we can make, again, is to be a good listener. Uh, to, to realize that people may not share the same point of view, but it doesn't mean that you're right and they're wrong. So if we demonstrate a willingness to hear the perspective of someone else, it helps to create a relationship. It helps to diffuse conflict. And particularly in enraged situations, when someone's emotional levels are very high, the first thing we have to do before we can be of influence is lower that emotion. And we mm. do that through demonstrating we really care what they have to say and we want to help them out. Wow, very interesting stuff. Gary Nessner, the uh, founding chief of the FBI Crisis Negotiation Unit, new book, Stalling for Time. Thanks for being our guest, Gary. Thank you very much. Well, the president reportedly said our country could absorb another terror attack. Is that really